Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video looking at why radios like this running open in HTX have three sections for how you connect a control on the radio to an output on the receiver, either plugging it into a flight controller or plugging it into a servo for something like a flying wing or a plane. Now for those people coming to Edge and OpenTX from other systems like Spectrum and others, that appears incredibly complicated, and I can absolutely understand why. That's exactly how I felt when I moved from Spectrum to Edge and OpenTX many, many years ago now. However, what you find is that although for simple setups, those three screens are basically redundant and there's an awful lot of duplication within them, as you get more and more sophisticated on the models that you set up and you get more and more clever about how you do everything, you'll find that the fact that there are three different places is incredibly powerful. Now, if you want to see some examples of what kind of amazing stuff you can do with Edge and OpenTX, then I have uh, OpenTX and EdgeTX mixing school. I'll put a link down below, go and check that out. But the reason for this video is one of my Patreons, a gentleman called Photios, actually popped me a message about this and said, can you kind of explain a little bit about why there are three and why it's so complicated and where you would use the individual bits for different setups. So Photios, this one is for you. Let me jump onto the desk and let's actually zoom on the screen and I'll kind of go through it and explain it with the help of a couple of slides. So here on the radio let's have a little bit of a deeper look at those three screens and those three screens are the ones that are here that almost make up like a little big icon I guess made of three little icons. There's the input screen if I jump across we have the inputs we have the mixer and we also have the outputs. Now why do we have three screens to do that? And is one of those parts of the OpenTX and EdgeTX system that makes it incredibly powerful. But if you're coming from another radio system like a Spectrum or those kind of radios, then you know what? That probably feels incredibly overly complicated. And you know what? For very simple setups, it's easy to understand why that's the case. Because the input screen looks the same as the mixer screen, kind of looks the same as the output screen. So why have three? So let's very quickly have a look at what you can set on the input screen. So if I press and hold the enter key and say edit, these are all the things that we can do. Now the input screen is there for you to connect different controls, so be that switches or trims or potentiometers or sliders or six position switches or whatever it is, put them on the radio in a way that you can then use them in other parts of OpenTX. So here we can do the basic thing, like give it a name. We can then decide on the source, the source being the control that you're interested in. The weight is how much of that control is passed through. We can set an offset, so we can move that up or down, essentially change the middle channel position. We can then add an expo, but we can also add different things like curves and stuff as well. We can also then decide which flight modes this switch operates on. Assign whether or not you also want it to be activated when the switch is in a certain position, whether or not it's just the positive or negative side of the switch that's being used, and whether or not there is a trim. Now, all of this seems like that's all you're ever going to need to set up an input. And for some things, like multi rotor pilots, that's absolutely the case. But anything you set up here on the inputs is always going to affect that particular input. So for example here, we're looking at the aileron. So if I set up Expo, or if I change the offset, or if I reduce the weight, so we get less of the control out, then everywhere else I use the aileron input in any other part of the radio, I'm always going to have that limitation of only 80% of the signal. So that's why we have other places to do stuff as well. So let's come out of the inputs where we're attaching physical controls to be inputs inside Edge or OpenTX. And what we'll do is we'll just pop across and we'll have a look at the mixer. Now in a simple model setup, you are going to do very little inside the mixer. Again, let's have a look at what we can do line by line. And it looks 
very similar to what we had in the input. We can give it a name, we can select the source. The source this time is actually the input. You can see it's got the input symbol to the left hand side. That input symbol is the one that we've just reduced the travel up to 80% on. We can change the weight individually here. We can change the offset again. We can decide whether the trim works or not. Again, we can set up uh, things like expo curves here too. We can decide the modes that work, the switch. Hmm, we've kind of seen all this before. However, there are extra things here that weren't in the inputs. Things like whether or not we want a warning for this particular thing, how channels are added together. So there's a couple of options. We have add, multiply, and replace. So that means that we can actually combine different inputs together and how that works, that's clever. And then we also have stuff over here that you don't have anywhere else. Delays up, down, and slow up and down as well. And this is really handy, not for things like multi-rotors, but incredibly handy for things like fixed wing and other models as well, where maybe you want things like the flaps to deploy, not in one single jerky movement in a fraction of a second, but to drop down gently in a more scale way and also in a way that you as a pilot can kind of pick up and correct for if it changes the pitch of the model. Now, if we come out of this for a second, what this also means is that you can actually have two inputs mixed onto one output. So if we select the uh, elevator and we copy it, we can actually move it onto channel one. So now channel one actually has two things together. And that is where the mixer is in its element. This is where you can do things like set up V-tail for fixed wing. You can set up uh, elevons for flying wings where the elevator and the aileron are connected. And that's where you'll see this all happening. And you can decide channel by channel because this now means that channel one is gonna be output one in the majority of cases for the radio, how this all works and individually change it. So say for example, maybe, the aileron is doing a, the aileron control on the radio is doing a couple of jobs. Then maybe you wouldn't reduce the travel in the inputs. You would keep it hundred percent, but you reduce the channel or the travel in here instead. And that would be a better way to do it because you're using the aileron for different things. And that can be handy for stuff like when you're setting up a rudder and maybe you have a pan servo for the camera at the front. I've done this. So as you use the rudder, it also means that the servo underneath the camera gently moves to the side. So you're kind of looking into the turn. That's a great way to do it. And that's why the mixer is so powerful. The next screen then, the last one, is the outputs. Now again, the outputs is where you tell the radio how those mixes are used and how those mixes translate into PWM values, the values that are sent to the servos or the values that are sent over an S-Bus or CRSF connection or whatever to something like a flight controller. Now this again is an area that's not really used if you are a quad pilot, but it's definitely going to be used if you are going to play with something like fixed wing. So let's have a quick look at what we have here. Let's edit channel one, which is that aileron. Well, now it's an elevon actually, because we mixed a couple of things into it. So here we can give it a name. You can look in the right hand corner, what, which is which. We have a sub trim. That's different from the trims that are via the radio. This is where you would use uh, the sub trim to kind of position the control surface in a neutral position in line with the wing or the tail feathers on something like a plane. Then we have the minimum and the maximum values here. And this is really handy. So say for example, you have a control that moves on a model that has a physical limit of how far it can move. You can set the minimum and maximum movement to make sure that it doesn't move past that point and cause damage to the model. This is incredibly handy, actually, if you're setting something like flaps up, where you might want three values of 1200, 1500, and 1800, are kind of the three values that you need to send to the servo for the flaps to be in the three normal positions, i.e. up, half flaps, and full flaps. You could use the minimum and maximum to set those limits so that you never overdrive those servos. The other thing you have here, is the direction. You can have regular and reversed. Again, reversing is something you can do in lots of other places. When we change that aileron in the inputs, if you remember that, and we changed it from 100 to 
if we change it to minus 80%, that changes the direction. This again is why sometimes OpenTX and EdgeTX seems overwhelming because if you watch lots of videos, you'll see the same thing being done multiple ways. But the default way to do it is kind of in here where you change it here with the direction. Then we have whether or not you want another curve and curve is very handy for changing very precisely how a servo moves. So rather than have a linear movement, it actually has a less linear movement and you can tweak that. And then you also have the PPM center and also the sub trim mode as well. So this is really more about servos, things like flaps, things like gear, all that stuff that you'd have on a much more complicated model. So the question I know I'm going to get is, well, how come, why are things repeated so much? Because we have the same offset in the inputs and mixer. We have the curves available in all three areas. Modes are in the inputs and mixer as well. Switches are too. And that is because as you get into more complicated setups and more complicated model types, you'll find that there are instances where you actually need to set up things like offsets, curves, modes, and switches on a per channel basis rather than a per input basis. And if you've never bumped into those, then that's great. Set all those stuff up on your inputs and you're good to go. If however, you're setting up a more complicated model and you find that you're having to have multiple inputs set up in order to make it work, then actually that's kind of what the mix is for. So if we just summarize here, let's talk about a very basic setup and why for lots of pilots, the fact that we have three things here in inputs, mixes and outputs looks completely over the top. Let's look at a very simple model. And this, for example, could be something like a multi-rotor where the inputs are going to be aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. And you might set up a switch for arming and you might set up a switch for modes. That's typically the way most of us do it these days. In the mixer, it's going to look exactly the same. It's going to look like aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder with channel 5 and channel 6 as your arming and mode switch. And then surprise, surprise, in the outputs, it's going to be exactly the same as well. The only thing you might do is in the outputs, you might tweak things like the sub trim because the sub trim might be needed to get the middle channel values on a flight controller for a multi-rotor at exactly 1500, which is where you want them. However, it's very different if you want to do something like a flying wing. In a flying wing, the three parts are very different. The inputs, you're going to have aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder as you would normally, or potentially whichever order you have your radio set up for. In the mixer though, then we're going to have two elevons. We're going to have the aileron and elevator both mixed into channel one, and we're going to have the same thing aileron and elevator mixed into channel two, typically with the aileron in an opposite direction. And then channel three would probably be our throttle. That is the power of the mixer. It's combining those inputs in a way that's going to work for the model that you're putting it in. And then in the outputs, then that is where a lot of the magic happens because with a plane, it may be that the channel one, which might be your left aileron on, the, on a wing, needs a certain amount of travel and it might need the sub trim. In fact, it probably will exactly need the sub trim changing. So we might need to use the sub trim to position it in the right position. And we might need to set the minimum and maximum to make sure it doesn't move past the extended limit. However, if you set the rates up in things like your inputs on or the mixer, then that should work too. And this, if you're a fixed wing pilot, is a screen that you tend to play with more than any other. But if you are a quad pilot, you know what? You probably don't use it at all. So hopefully that helps Photios. That is why these three things exist and where you tend to use them for setups for particular things. In a simple setup like this, then the inputs, the mixes and the outputs I kind of all going to go together. And if you're a quad pilot, you probably don't worry about that at all. And that's absolutely fine. However, if you're a fixed wing pilot or other model types like boats or cars or flying wings, those kind of things, then you know what? You are almost certainly going to end up doing different things in each screen. And that is where the power of these three screens together give you an awful lot of options of how all of that stuff works.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.